Hello there and welcome to Namident Academy. Today we are going to discuss about handling a letter from editor as a result of your submission. Before we dive in deeply, I would like to encourage you to subscribe to this channel if you have not yet subscribed to it and to share the video with your colleagues and friends that they can also benefit from these videos. Review or the reviewers in aspect of uh, article or manuscript or uh, publication is very important and that reviewers are researching themselves they are in the same field as you and the importance of review is to add quality to your manuscript and that during your uh, submission you are requested to list some contact that you think they have more knowledge or experience in this your field that they can review your paper to improve your paper or suggest ways that you can improve your papers. Editors sometimes will submit these works to the listed uh, referees that you gave or they will set for what who they think will be proper to judge or to review your paper. And that after the revision, the editor will read their comment and based on their comment and also the editor's understanding of your paper, he will write you a letter. So that's it. Before we talk about that, I would like to bring your attention to one important aspect of academic criticism. Many people take academic criticism personally and that they think is kind of a, a judgment on their intelligence and that brings a lot of conflict and that also brings a lot of stress to people in academics. But actually, academic criticism is not aspect of your personal intelligence or you as a person is all has to do with the science in question. So I encourage you to do away with taking things personally. This advice I got from my uh, supervisor in my early uh, part of my studies that when somebody criticizes your work and look at it, you don't have to take it personally. Look, calm down and look inside deeply in the comment the person gave. Either it's a grant application or manuscript or scholarship or any form of things that you make an output to the scientific community and some people are given advantage to evaluate those output. Does it tally with the science of our time or not? And these people can give comment. And some of their comments sometimes are harsh in that not all reviewers have taken a reviewer's courses to be able to know how they can review works of their colleagues in that they are not superior to you. They are your colleagues in the field and they give their comments. So calm down and don't take it personally. The earlier you understand this process, the better for your health and for your interaction with everybody and any institution in academic and in research. So after mentioning that, Coming back to our uh, editor's letter, when you receive a letter from editor, is we have three 
possibilities that your manuscripts have been accepted, your manuscripts need minor review before final acceptance, your manuscripts have major review before acceptance, or the manuscript is rejected. So this makes it four, or let's say three, if it's uh, accepted or request review or uh, rejected. This is a three option. But in the review, we have another two options, major review or minor review. So in most cases, it's hardly very, very hard for a manuscript to be accepted immediately after uh, peer review. By all means, there will be a statement of check the language, uh, here the grammatical uh, mistake, the type, uh, typographical correction here and there. So that's need a minor review. So mostly, if you receive a minor review on your manuscript, it clearly indicates that the editor is interested in publishing your work and that he just, according to the norm, he can accept it outright that you have to correct some things for the manuscript to be accepted. And if your manuscript is... Uh, uh, requesting a major review, it also possibility that the science is very good and the editor is interested in the science and the review of a lot of criticism over that, but yet still the editor trying to give you a second chance. And when your manuscript is rejected, it doesn't mean that the science is not good. It's clearly saying that there is a lot of correction and a lot of uh, decision or a lot of things work has to go on in the work to improve, to make your work mature. So as a researcher, when you receive a rejection, you have two options. First, is to look into the review, the reports of the reviewers to address each and every one of their comments and then resubmit it to the manuscript, uh, to the journal, or submit your work to a different journal. But my advice to you is this. Even if you choose to submit it to another journal, please and please and please try to check and address major part of uh, the reviewer's comment because uh, reviewers are also researchers like you. They have used their valuable time to make effort on your work and that if you improve those work, through their thing is very highly advantageous that you can get published somewhere. Because sometimes uh, a reviewer can review a work in, let's say, Jana A, and when you send it to Jana B, it is still brought to him again. And if he has not seen this kind of thing he recommended in the first Jana A, he still give you the same comment there. So, even if you are, you want to submit it somewhere, try as much as possible to consider all the important criticism and comment of the reviewers. So let's say you have received the comment from the editor and reviewers. Mostly this comment comes in general comment and specific comment. So you address the general comment one and also address specific comments separately in the same document. But before starting to address their comment and work on manuscripts, 
if those rejection or the comment is very heavy on you, I advise you to leave the manuscript for two or three days to ponder around and calm yourself down so that you have a calm down in going to address the uh, comment and their criticism. And sometimes the comment will result in total revision of the manuscript as if you are writing everything together. And sometimes the comment will result in total rewriting of the manuscript as if you are writing from scratch. If you think that is so worth it, go on with that. So if you are going to address the reviewer's comment, if there are two reviewers or three, mostly you write ad, uh, answers or uh, respond to reviewer one, and then you bring comment one. Then you state the comment, and then second, uh, immediately after that, you bring response. Then you give the response. Then you give a paragraph or a space down, then you go to comment two. Then you bring the comment as stated in the uh, revised, uh, as stated in the manuscript that brought, uh, was brought to you, and then address it that way and move to the second uh, reviewer and the third and so on and so forth. Do it that way. And also in the manuscript that you have revised, Try to address all the important things you address. Of course, the uh, reviewer's uh, comment is not a gospel that you have to stick to it or what. You yourself are also a researcher. At times, there's a need to stand on your science, on your claim, and that politely address that issue without any form of aggressive aggression or any form of insult and address the science. If you need to give further support in literature to support your work, do so so that you can be able to revise your work in that way. So if you after you address all the comments and also you are finished revising the manuscript according to those comments, what you would do is the revised manuscripts try to highlight all the changes you do. All the changes highlight them. So in submitting the revised version of manuscript to the same journal, you can have like three or let's say four documents. First, now we are talking about the letter. Uh, first, you are the comment response to edited uh, to rev uh, reviewers comment that you state as i said previously the second one is you have a manuscript in a pdf or web document where you have highlighted everything that you have changed and the second uh, the third document will be a manuscript without highlighting the changes made and the fourth one will be a letter to a man uh, to editor or a cover letter. So in this cover letter to editor, you are trying to explain to the editor that you have addressed all the major concern. And if there is a point of disagreement, you will highlight it there, address that point of disagreement there that with this point and this, this, this is the science, is the thing. So, because not all reviewers are people who have mastered those fields. We have seen uh, some reviewers just review any document that they get in order to get some uh, point or something to say I'm a reviewer here and there. And that when you look through a review that a person outside the field has revealed, clearly you can see that the person has no mastery uh, of the literature review or no mastery of the science under consideration. So you can address those things in your uh, letter to editor politely 
uh, them. And that, at times, a common thing is that when somebody who edited your work is coming from a country where English language is not their first language or uh, the education uh, is not in English, mostly they don't understand some of the English language and the compound kind of uh, writing that uh, people from the first, uh, whose first language is English or mother language is English use like three lines or four lines making a statement. So the person highly will tell you that, uh, check the language, the language, there's a problem with the language. And this is a common thing I have, uh, my friend in the UK, who is an English, that he received such a comment and he told me he was shocked to receive those things. So as much as possible, if you are writing your manuscript, write, it with simple language and short statement that will help you save time for this kind of comment. So after this and having all these comments, you also need to give the revised manuscript to a colleague or a friend in the field to reread and proofread your work to see if the signs and the correction tally with your signs. And also, uh, you can give again the manuscript to somebody outside your field so that the person can proofread it and to make all the typo correction or the language correction. And also, your other colleagues, if you are co authoring the work with others, for them to go through all of them and then resubmit your work. And that maybe in this second round, you paper will get accepted. If it's still rejected, don't give up because we have seen situation where somebody has submitted one single manuscript to more than 20 different journals for a period of three years receiving rejection, making correction, adjustment until the paper was finally published. And this paper led that person to getting Nobel Prize. So if you are working in a new science, in something that is not common, of course you are going to face criticism in the uh, science, scientific environment about your work but if you believe the science is right your discovery is right never lose energy try and pursue it and then have more energy follow it up and surely your paper will be published in one of the good journals and then that will lead you to that will and that will open a lot of collaboration opportunity for you to help you in your career. So I'm coming to the end of this video. Thank you very much for your time and attention. And I hope you have enjoyed this video. I encourage you to share this video with your colleagues and friends. And if you have not subscribed to this channel, do well to subscribe to it. See you next time. 